Hello and welcome to the Kingdom YouTube channel. My name is Jacko. If you want to know more about me, check out my Twitter at Jacko-2026. Anyways, today's video we're going to be discussing the Drifters video from Vidigo. This is part of the Director's Cut series where we go over some basic commentary about the video. Usually with the person who voiced the video, in this case that is me, and the person who edits the video. Uh, right now and probably for the foreseeable future I am the only editor of the Kingdom YouTube channel that might change who knows anyways let's get into it we're not watching a special version this time like we did with the one piece version we're actually watching the normal version that you guys got um, primarily because a lot of the other original versions have been lost but also because um, I find it's more interesting because this is what exactly what you got. So it's more of a proper review. We of course start with the ad. I've explained this before, um, but I'll explain it again. The reason why we do ads at the beginning of videos or even do ads at all is because the YouTube channel currently doesn't make any money. And while you might immediately assume that that's greed, um, that we're after your money or we want money uh, simply because we have a greedy or a desire to have money and wealth. Well, here's the thing. While the community currently, as of uh, February of 2021, does not have any events or debts or requirements of monetary value at the moment in order to expand and improve upon what we currently have we need to have an, a reliable income and currently we can't profit off of the videos most of the videos we could make money off of them because of the way that they're edited even though they're covering uh, anim anime and all that stuff they're educational so we're able to make money off of the YouTube channel but unless we reach a thousand subscribers and have certain amount of views overall we can't make money off of the channel so the only way to make money is through the patreon which is linked in the description below and through the merch which is also linked in the description below the merch is very different to the channel there's some stuff that's um, designed after aspects of the kingdom others are not most of them are not so that's how we this is this is our plan for improving and in, in order to improve we need to have an income so I, I apologize once again if this feels greedy upon first viewing um, but if you can't buy merch and you can't donate but you still want to help um, leaving a comment subscribing liking the videos does all the same because if we can get to the point where we can make money off the channel then there will be no need to have these ads at the beginning of the videos anyways let's continue So a, a few times I've had questions regarding the intros, um, the ex actual explained intro where the explained text comes up and uh, a Marvel-like intro plays in the background. And specifically, I've had questions about the music using that and why it's altered, edited, or whatever. The reason that the music, usually OST music, soundtrack, official soundtracks from the series that are used in the videos are edited because although the sounds and the clips are less than uh, say 20 seconds long YouTube does not care and will instantly snag that video and will not allow us to show it to you will not allow us to put it in your feed if you hit subscribe um, and there's the only way around that is by adding these effects onto it which in some cases I will personally admit in some videos does make the sound of the music and the intro uh, borderline atrocious. I think that the Sailor Moon video and the Doctor Stone video were some of the worst ones. And maybe recently the Space Dandy intro was a bit bad. 
Um, but that's that's what we have to do. And I like using the music from the series because it. we're talking about the series. I'm not going to cover the music. We rarely talk about the music in the videos. We want to make that part of a review series later on. Um, usually, or hopefully by someone who's actually uh, really talented in the music world. Um, that's why I haven't done it yet. I'm trying to find someone to cover a series like that. You will be getting reviews very soon uh, about series. Um, so subscribe and stay tuned for that. But we, ha we have to edit the music and we have to include it because we're talking about the series. It seems almost stupid not to use the music, but it's even stupid to uh, use the music, not edit it, and somehow expect not to get copyright struck by uh, YouTube and not have the video be shown to you guys. So that's why we have to edit the intro. Uh, as for the logos that appear at the beginning of the video, I, I believe that Drifters might have been the one that I made the first proper custom one. I mean, for the Dory Doro video, I did make a logo, but it's really just the text and um, Kaiman's head. So it's really not that much, but I, I release these logos now on my um, DeviantArt account, which has got the same name as uh, everything else. So Jacko-2026. And uh, I'm gonna start posting them on their, the respective subreddits as well to share them around. So if you ever want to um, look at them in greater detail or I don't know, use them in your own videos or something like that. There they are. You can buy them on the DeviantArt for whatever their currency point system is. So have fun with that. Anyways, let's continue. Alright, so already we've hit a point where I've mispronounced uh, uh, a name. The reason why, or the main reason why the Drifters video was redone was because of pronunciation errors. Now, how is it possible that there were pronunciation er errors at all? As you know, we script our videos, so it seems almost implausible or implausible that we would uh, have errors such as this in there's opportunities to edit the video, of course. Why do we still have these uh, pronunciation errors? Why did they fix in editing? Well, the Drifters video is, um, I've always been mixed about it. Um, been semi-proud of it. I thought it was edited really well and I'll talk about it as it goes on. Um, but this video specifically was um, cutting down to the last wire. I think it might've taken two weeks to make this video, give or take. And the thing that was making it really take the longest, like the reason why it was taking so long, was because the voicing for the video. Um, in case you're unaware, our videos are voiced by multiple people within the Kingdom community. I select and pick people typically from the Discord, but um, I'm, I've started messing around with the idea of picking people from the comments. So if you want to voice a video, um, leave the name of the series and... Um, where I can contact you with the script to voice said video because uh, I'd like to be able to give you guys the opportunity to be part of this channel because this channel is a community channel so that's why we do these multiple voices um, I will be voicing the Redux series as a whole and the director's cut I will always be in here um, because I am the community manager so re-edits and talking about edits and talking about the community I think is best suited for me and myself uh, that might change in the future i don't really know we'll see maybe someone else will take up my mantle but who knows we're really early on in the um, the kingdom's life cycle so who knows that we can't really discuss something that's that that far away um so yeah this video came down to the last wire i think this is one of the few videos maybe the second or third video i had voice for the for the channel so i was really burning through this script to try and get it done so not only was I uh, rushing it, but as it happens, I was very sick that week. Um, I don't think it comes off that much that I had a sore throat um, and had a major headache, but I was doing this um, as I always record the videos late at night, um, sick at the last minute, trying to edit this video. So that's why this video, um, as many people commented, um, is poor, uh, 
feels offbeat. Um, if you, we'll talk about it later, but there are a lot of examples where the graphics don't match up with the audio. And that's because I put too much effects on the video and Premiere, um, the, the preview was lagging behind of the actual timeline. So when I put in graphics in the timeline and it was showing in the preview, there was a delay there. So I was actually, that's why there's a lot of weird shit going on in the video. Uh, a little bit off beat, a little off pace. I'll talk about that more as it goes on. Anyways, let's continue. Dashika Magazine, Young King Hours, the manga was adapted into an anime by the Japanese animation studio Hoods Entertainment on October 7, 2015. See, I find that first section really boring or really like awkward um, because there's very little noise in the background. I've gotten a lot of comments about people saying, uh, why is there music in the background? The voices in the background are uh, are distracting. Most of the time that's the comment I get. Um, but honestly, I personally find that if I were a viewer of the said content, if I were you watching this content, I would uh, borderline be on the level of cringe. Because um, a lot of us, you know, this is, we're not professionals in voicing the videos. Um, a lot of times we're talking about topics that we are fans of, but we're trying to talk in a serious manner. Um, and oftentimes we're talking about words, people, places, etc., of events, people, places, and things that we have never even try to pronounce before so there's a very weird um cringe factor in there and so i i think at the very least the you besides everything i've stated in the previous one piece video about that i think at the very least to avoid the cringe you need to have that sound in the background and for the first opening part of this drifters uh, explained video i find the the lack of sound or the sound being as low as it is is distractingly cringy anyways let's continue something clearly written and illustrated by the japanese manga artist suda hiron most famous for his supernatural action-based vampiric manga series titled health so a lot of times we get comments about um, men on the Reddit and be like people saying, well, you repeated this part, such, such a weird pacing. The reason why we often repeat things is especially when it comes to names is that because of the, the videos are English, right? Saying a Japanese person's name or saying the name of an author or uh, or a director for the series that's often not known or it's often not known by the people who are viewing it the the general viewer of said things we want to drill home some of these key factors so we end up repeating things a lot uh, most of the time it's names just so you'd be like all right so this guy did it this guy did it don't forget about this guy because we're going to talk about this guy again and a lot of times when we say their full name twice, that means we're trying to tell you who this guy is. Remember who this guy is. Envision this picture, because we're not going to keep showing you this, this picture. And we're not going to keep calling this guy by his first name. So we're trying to get you to remember who this guy is, what he looks like, what he's done. So that later on when we mention him again and we don't show his picture, you have an image in your brain and the full name in your brain so you can understand what's going on. Anyways, let's continue. Published on April 30th of 2009 for the Japanese monthly Shinen magazine, Young King Hours, the sister publication of Young King. While the manga series is serialized in Shonen Gap Honestly, I personally love Drifters. I, I have yet to read the manga, but I plan to. And uh, I'm trying to think, There's, if you enjoyed Helsing, Honestly, and you haven't watched Drifters? Come on. You gotta watch Drifters. Publisher Daypop in Taiwan by Kong Lee Publishing and in Poland by 
Japonica Polonica Fantastica. As of September of 2020, the now 79 chapters have been collected into six Tankobon volumes. The Japanese term for a book that's not part of a series since the first volumes were released in Japan on July 7th of 2010. According to Singanen's page in the Drifter's original artwork display event during the celebration of the 450 years since the death of Sengoku period samurai Shimatsu Koshinika, the Drifter's manga has sold well over 1.5 million copies worldwide in five different languages. So hold on. So that saying an end page on the Drifters art ex exhibit, I didn't show it in the Redux. And some of you with um, a sharper eye might have noticed that, um, or those who cared to see the blurry image in the background. And that was because the page doesn't exist anymore. Um, the exhibit was happening, basically happening at the boom of the ongoing global pandemic. And, um, so I, I'm assuming maybe the art exhibit never happened or was reformatted into something else. I have no idea. But the page doesn't exist. If you go to the original Drifters video right now, or you can go down to the description and look at the the, the links there as well, and click the link for the singing end page, you'll see that it doesn't ex it's not the same as what's shown. So what you're seeing in the background, that's it. I tried to get it by using the Wayback Machine, available on archive.org. Wouldn't find it. Someone hadn't screenshot it yet. I plan on going to Japan at some point in my life, and I am 1,000% visiting this place, though. They have so many cool things there, so many artifacts and stuff, um, but they have events there, too. Like, you can wear armor. You can rent out armor to wear. For example, you can wear Toyohisa's or this Toyohisa, the, the main Toyohisa of the Drifter series, uh, a replica of his armor with like all the, all clean or all, all the piercings of the spears, which I think is insane. I feel like I've been to a few museums where they kind of let you do something similar, but it's usually like, here's the clean like armor. They don't really make you understand when you put on the armor of like, here's what it felt like. These were all, you, where he's all shot and everything. You, got to, you don't get to put that kind of shit on. No, no, whatever. Um, let's continue. <laughs> the laughter of dead men. Originally premiering in Tokyo, Japan, on the independent television station Tokyo NX, the animation adaptation of the series first started as a 150-second long animation short, bundled into the tenth and final volume of the Helsing Ultimate. The short was supervised by Helsing Ultimate's chief animation director, Ryoji Nakamori, the veteran animator. Yeah, I, I fucking, I screwed up his name really bad. ...and Masayori Tomai, his animation director, before airing its first episode. If you've ever wondered what that music is that I use a lot, that you just heard in that sing and end uh, section, uh, section, it was taken from a four-hour video of... Um, the author of Jojo Bizarre's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure drawing all the characters. Uh, I can link it in the description down below if you want, or for your your uh, benefit, I'll link it in the description. To be on Blu-ray disc and regular and limited edition versions, released on December twenty-third of twenty seventeen, with a fifteen-episode bundle with a special edition of the manga six volume on November thirtieth of twenty eighteen. A specially edited version of the first and second episodes was bundled with the manga's fifth volume. And yeah, I pronounce. See, I was talking about cringe before, but this is watching, knowing now how badly I mispronounce names. I mean, I mean, I knew at the time that I was pronouncing them incorrectly because I'd watched the series, but even then, I don't know. I personally don't own the Blu rays. And uh, if you do want to watch the series, I actually will leave a few links in the description for you where you can watch them. Because it's kind of hard to watch it now because Funimation pulled them. And I mentioned that in the Redux version. They pulled them seemingly um, because it's taking so long for season two to come out. So they, they, they lost the contract that didn't renew it. Sometimes the images don't always match what's being said. 
and that's because often images can't be found. Yeah, I tried very hard to figure out what was on the mystery disc. Um, and as far as I could tell, it was specially edited versions of the episodes. Um, or the first five episodes or so. But there was no confirmation or written report of exactly what it was. Yeah, the second season is still going to take a while. Nothing's changed between when I did the original version and the Redux. I think my eye catchers have gotten better, and I think my ending of sections has also gotten better. Let me know in the comments what you think. I, I, I always like hearing what you guys are thinking. And yes, we do always say the story itself has a rather simple yet engaging premise. It's simple. Oh, okay, so those that those images of the elves, dwarves, and humans were all heavily edited. I had to remake the axe and remake some of the hair of the characters. Um, because as it turns out, um, a lot of times those characters are cut out in a certain way. So if you notice, some of the hair might not look exactly like the style, or some of the acts might not look exactly the way, but I hope I did a good job. Let me guy, let me know what you guys think. Think if I redid the top of the axe pretty well or not. Um, I'll show you what the original image looks like on screen right now, and you can compare it to the way that the uh, dwarf, for example, ended up looking like. Uh, as for the hobbit, or hobbits that I mentioned, um, that was a comment made by uh, a general in the early episodes that there was hobbits within the series. I don't believe we've ever seen hobbits, even in the manga. Anyways, let's continue. Back then I used to make every text an image be individual layers eventually i just put them together and then made a subsequence of them Yeah, you can see the easy that the 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 word easy and the image don't line up. You guys should always watch the videos that have been shown in the background. So if you ever if you ever want to watch more content related to the series discussed in the explained videos, watch the stuff that's shown in the background. That's what we're trying to do for you. We're trying to introduce you to new content. Personally, the thing that I like more about this version than the Redux is that I chose to do full-scale um, edited versions of the characters from scenes within the anime. So it's very it's HD quality. It's clear. It's cut. But it just takes so much time to do that and cut through them all. And, um, you know, it just takes it takes a lot. I'm, we're trying to get these videos out once a, or at least one a week um, and not always is there a perfectly HD quality version of every character um, like for Oda for example that is a very odd face to have and it takes up a lot of the screen you barely see the stuff in the background so when we use the normal ones you can at least see the screen that or what's going on So I'm, I'm pretty proud of how the character introductions were handled on editing uh, or effects wise. 
but I am uh, fully aware that I mispronounce a lot of the names. By the way, if you are interested in learning more about these characters, all the stuff is provided in the links of the videos and everything. Um, Drifters was exceptionally fun to research because I read through quite a few books to learn about stuff uh, for the Battle of Hike, or however you pronounce it. Um, that was quite interesting to learn about. I wasn't fully aware about that story. Um, it's a bunch of little stories like that. Oda I was kind of unaware of um, in terms of uh, his importance within history. Hannibal and um, Scipio is pretty uh, well aware of. I did quite a bit of uh, research on the two of them because they seem to have a lot of conflicting research about them. Um, there's a possibility that they were really, really good friends and they might have, you know, committed uh, um, seppuku. Because <laughs> uh, I don't want to say the actual word because I'm afraid of YouTube hitting us. Um, but they might have done it out of like a, uh, not a Romeo and Juliet sort of way, but out of respect, potentially. I'm not sure. Sometimes I forget, and um, I mean the Naruto video that I'll be covering in a later date, that video was a, a great example of a lot of shit happened during the process of rendering the video and submitting to YouTube that I was completely unaware of. So if you, uh, when we go to talk about that one, you'll see. If you've ever wondered what the uh, font is called for whenever I'm showing stuff now in recent videos, it's um, called Gotham, Gotham Black. So that's the, uh, I usually use two text fonts, Gotham Black and uh, one called Kamikaze. See that Sundance Kid one is a, a prime example of why I don't do the full HD things. Is why it looks really good. It covers up way too much of the screen and you can't see what's going on or what I'm talking about. I had known about the Sundance Kid prior, but I didn't know that um, that him and Butch Cassidy had died um, of anything other than old age, or at, that they even were known to have died at all. Like just, well, they just disappeared. Yep, Naoshi. Uh, I'm supposed to say Naoshi, I still mispronounce in the Redux version. Um, whether, um, hold on, let me pause this real quick so I can discuss this better. Um, I've received comments now, and I appreciate every comment, even the Redux ones, about mistakes that I made, because we can't improve without your help, right? We can't improve without your help. Your comments are vital to improving this channel uh, and becoming a better channel as a whole, better community as a whole. And um, I was, there was a few comments I received about mispronunciations. Um, I used a few sites when I was making sure to triple check basically that I was pronouncing everything correctly. So I was a bit surprised that I still mispronounce things. Uh, whether or not I will do a redux of the redux, um, it's very unlikely. I don't think I will. Um, however, I will take those comments into account when I do a review of the series. And a review of Drifters will be coming out very, very soon. I'm most likely going to be doing a review about a series called Monster. I've been watching the series lately. I am on episode 23 or 24 as of recording this. Um, there's about 70 episodes. So it's going to be a little bit before I get there. Um, the reason why I'm choosing to do Monster, a series we haven't covered in Explained videos yet, is because I really feel like I have a lot to talk about that series, and I also feel like that series is rarely talked about. Although, I did discover the series from a video discussing the antagonist, but I feel like people don't review series like that, um, these days especially. I feel like people don't do reviews of anime anymore. Really, I think Gigak might have commented. I think Gigak did a video about it. How uh, reviews are kind of out of date for anime because it's so uh, easy and accessible to watch one episode and know what to think and then move on. But I think that there's a lot more to 
uh, knowing when anime is good or not, and that reviews are almost vital these days. I'll be discussing that in an entirely different video, so subscribe, stay tuned, uh, keep a lookout for new series. We have a ton planned for the next few weeks and months. Anyways, let's continue. Personally, I think he's one of my favorite characters. Actually, scratch it. He's my favorite character in the series. He's great. His introduction is great. Uh, well-timed, well-planned. Uh, he's a, got great comedic timing. He offers the series something else that the something that the other characters can't offer. In the world of Drifters, Naoshi was transported during a battle between the Ames and the Orta Empire, where he helped take down numerous enemy combatants and dragons after having memories of the bombing of Tokyo trigger him. Kamon Yamaguchi was a rear admiral in the Imperial Japanese Navy who served during the Second Sino-Japanese War and the Pacific War during the Second World War before meeting his end at the Battle of Midway, during which he chose to go down with his ship, the Hiru, after having it crippled by the U.S. Enterprise and subsequently scuttled. Like yeah, I, I made some of these things way too fast, like scuttling in the Hiru. Gumunin might have been a bit of a spoiler. Um, if you hadn't watched the whole series, his introduction as a whole is probably a bit of a spoiler, but he is in the intro, so I don't know. I apologize if that did spoil the series for you. Uh, it was not intended. I'm going to have a video all about the Black King out in a few bits, a few bits, a few weeks, about discussing the few theories I have about who the Black King could be. Personally, I think the theory of Jesus is actually pretty sound, but I want to question it. I want to show you guys some other possibilities. During the Bakumatsu period, who resisted the Meiji Restoration before meeting his end on June 20th of 1859 while leading his troops on horseback near the Ukongangu Kanmon after a bullet shattered its lower back. In the world of drifters, Hijigata has the ability to use smoke to manifest ghostly images of members of the Shinjigumi who he uses to cut apart his enemies. Joanne of Arc, nicknamed the I used two different images for uh, Joanne of Arc. I also pronounced um the characters like Joanne and um Guidere in English because it's kind of hard for me to switch between English and French uh especially in recording so I I know that um Giles de Ray is not really his name it's Guidere and uh Joanne d'Arc or Joanne d'Arc or whatever her name is um or Joanne or Joanne probably Joanne like, it's how you pronounce the names. Like, I understand that, but it's just kind of hard, you know. Most of the people who watch are English. I thought for sure YouTube was going to hit us when uh, we discuss about child murders. I also found it very interesting that... Um, Guide de Ré had, you could find exactly the time, date, and everything, and the place where he was killed. Blushkits, those guys, I couldn't pronounce them in the Redux, so I just cut them out. Because um, it was also just a theory that they had killed them, but uh, it was seemingly a pretty sound theory. Also, Rasputin, I did not know what he looked like prior to doing the Drifters video. I had seen him in the Hellboy movies when I was a kid. And I, I just thought he was just some bigger, muscly dude, you know, whatever. But holy shit, is he a nightmare. Like, he looks like a beast to me. And not in, like, the kind of actual buff beast way. Like, he looks like a fucking... He looks like a creature that would come out of the woods. Especially in that specific picture, how deep, how like deep his eyes look. 
Also, you can read that Rasputin book online for free in uh, on Google. Oh, yeah, I pronounced Oda as Oba a few times, but once again, like I like I said, I was late at night, sick, had a massive headache, and it was a rush recording. I know that's not all great excuses, but that's what I got for you. That's why a lot of these things were very poorly mispronounced, and why I had to do a redux. In case you're wondering why the background imagery is of a guy at a panel, that's the voice for Toyohisa. I wish I understood what the Toyota clan logo is supposed to be. To me, it almost looks like a toad or a frog. Yeah, that, that book was kind of hard to find whether or not that. It was the only source to discuss that his head was put into a black lacquer chest full of sake. But imagine that. Imagine getting your head cut off. Imagine, imagine committing seppuku because a guy kills all your men, all your soldiers. And then after you commit seppuku, the guy decides, oh, that's not enough. Cuts off your head. Alrighty, that's pretty, that's pretty insane. Now he puts it in a chest. Dude, what the hell? What the, why the fuck are you doing this? And then he puts sake in the fucking chest. I'd be so fucking livid if I was a spirit. I'd be so fucking pissed if that dude made me fucking commit seppuku, cut off my head, and then put it in a chest, in, inside of a chest filled with fucking booze. I'd be so pissed. In case you wonder why we use a lot of profile pictures, like of these like like people covered in shadows, is because I can't find images that I can le legitimately say that it's that person. Like a lot of the time, I can find like. Peter Gabriel or whatever, I can find a picture of a Peter Gabriel. Whether that's the Peter Gabriel who left the review, I don't know. So, unless I can 100% say that is the image. And most of the time, I use Anime List and Anime News Network as re my reliable sources for these imagery. Because not only does Anime List have a wide variety of music, or a wide variety of images, but Anime News Network also has an entire encyclopedia dedicated to pretty much every series and cast and everything in between. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't recognize a goddamn end to this parade. Thank you for watching. My name is Jacko, and if you want to know more about me, check out my Twitter, Jacko Dark. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a bit of things about the behind the scenes of making this drifters explain video about making the explain videos as a whole why we do certain things if you have any questions that i didn't answer in this one please leave them in the comments below if you enjoyed the video hit like if you dislike the video hit dislike and uh if you want to be if you want to stay up to date see if our new content we're going to be having an explain video out very very soon here's a little uh tool tip for you it's going to be about a series about demons, a guy that wears earrings and has a massive burn mark on his head. So you can figure out what that one is. You'll know what the next explained video is going to be about. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned. We have some new series. Make sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video and would like to not only help us make more like this, but improve videos like this and improve our content, consider supporting us on Patreon. There's a link in the description down below. As well for everything mentioned in this video and the video covered in this video. Anyways, have a good one.